Hello. In this video, I am going to introduce Jackrabbit's new trailing module. I have it loaded on a chart already with a particular setup because it highlights certain conditions that I need to make sure are covered with the usage of this new module. For now, I'm going to hide this so this part here is visible. The trailing module is the purest, fullest implementation that can exist for this kind of a module. It can trail both buying and selling. You can choose them independently and individually as necessary. If you choose not to have a buy or a sell signal trailed, then it simply passes it through to the next module. Buying and selling retracement are independent and these are percentages. Now, in a true and proper context of trailing, the actual purchase does not take place until the price action crosses the retracement. That means if you have your percent set to 0.5%, when it reaches its high point, it has to drop or climb depending upon the direction. For example, a buy signal, the price action has to climb above the retracement before a purchase takes place. That is the proper context of how this works. And this is implemented very specific to that context. For example, here is the original price this asset was purchased at. Here is the current price that it sees it. Here is the price that it must cross before the purchase actually takes place. Now that we've explained that, I'm going to zoom this out a little bit to find the actual buy signal that was received from the ADX module which is right here. Here is the actual signal for purchase. This is important, and here is a previous signal. Now, if you keep following it back to the very first purchase, okay, there's the sell signal. So here is the very first purchase of this cycle. When it reached this purchase, it did not make an accumulation. Instead, it checked to see if this purchase price was lower than this purchase price. If it was, then it took the lower value. For purchases, the trailing process always follows the price down. There is no set retracement for following it down. If the current price is lower than the previous price, it takes the lowest value, and it follows it down until it stops going down. Which means, as long as this price is dropping, it always accepts the lowest value. But the purchase does not take place until it crosses the retracement value. That retracement is always reevaluated to be sure the most accurate number for it is used. That is important with respect to the trailing module. Note that in context of the selling, it is the exact opposite of the buying. So let's go back here. So 
let's and a zoomed out rate you'll see the buy took place here but the buy has not taken place here because it has not broken the retracement value the purchase or sales do not happen until either side crosses its appropriate retrace value. There are no exceptions to that. And that is in general what makes trailing slower than a flat take profit. By mechanical definition, you have to cross the retrace. So let's bring up the replay method. and we will examine a sell process. Okay, so now in the replay method, watch these numbers carefully as they will dynamically change appropriate to the replay. Okay, here is the first cell. Now notice the cell marker from ADX was received here, but the actual cell price did not happen until here when it crossed its retracement value. Let's back that up to right here. Here's the cell marker. Let's zoom this in to get these numbers a little clearer. Okay. Now the black line mm -hmm. is the price action. Okay, so right here, we have the selling price of the signal. We have the original price. So as you can already see, it's begun following the price up. So let's step it. And as long as the, okay, now it figured out the retrace value. So now as you progress and you see from the selling point, the original sell value, the current price as it is, and then the actual price that this has to cross to actually make the sell happen. So let's keep stepping forward and watch the numbers as they will update dynamically as appropriate, which means you will see the current price update and you will see the retrace update as necessary on the basis of the current price. So you see here is the current price, here is the retrace. And it is important that this happens specific to the process. And now we have the actual sell marker because the price physically crossed the retrace. Now you saw a few times what looked like ghost signals. This module is very absolute. The actual sell process does not take place until it crosses the retrace. So whatever the highest value is, back here, for example, you will automatically lose the retrace value off of this profit. That is a requirement in order for the action to take place. Now, the second point of that, if you lower the retrace, meaning you pick a smaller number so that you don't have as much profit loss. You won't gain as much profit incline. 
because as the price climbs, if it retraces even a little bit that crosses the bottom boundary, it gets out of the way as well. And this is the downside to what a retrace or excuse me, a trailing process is. Now let's put the candlesticks in place where you can actually see the correlation. And you see just how long trailing can take place. For example, here is the buy process. And notice, it still has not actually made the purchase. And it has been roughly an hour that it has been trailing this price until that retracement is met on this value here it will not make the purchase that can be good if you're looking for the best price action that can be bad if you have the best price action already the trailing process by nature and by design is slower than a flat take profit because of the requirement of crossing the retracement boundary. There is no way around that fact. So while it does have the potential to give you better profits, it also can cause you not to get as high of a profit or as low of a purchase price as you might have gotten without trailing the price. It is a devil's sword, and you do need to evaluate it carefully and specifically. And as I said, during the actual trailing price, accumulation does not take place. As long as this module is tracking a position, it does not allow any other purchases until this cycle is completed. That is an advantage in that it cuts down your risks, trying to give you the best price possible. That is a disadvantage if you are looking specifically for high yield and rapid force accumulation. This is a clear example of just exactly the time frame that trailing can take. And as you can see here, purchases can take just as equally as long. Now the irony of it is this trailing took place here to which the algorithm tracked. But notice a buy signal came in back here. This buy signal got ignored from the previous cycle. Or may have exented the current cycle. It offsets significantly where one trade cycle starts and ends because of the holding process. So here you have a buy cycle that should have finished here. But because of the trailing process, the buy cycle that started here didn't actually finish until someplace over here. So as you can see, there are a lot of interesting facets to take place. And this buy cycle that started here didn't actually take place till here because it needed to cross the retracement. And as you can see from the red line, it followed the price down. So once it got to here, then the retracement took place here. It looks strange and it is strange which is why I generally don't recommend it as a general practice because it does knock out of sync your trade cycle and it can be confusing 
because of the requirement of the price action crossing the retracement before the actual signal can take place. So when you use this, be sure you understand carefully that this is a very unique process. And these numbers are placed here to help you track it because it does look very different from normal trading processes. Be sure as you work with your numbers, you pay close attention to your retracements because they will have an impact. Lower numbers mean less obscurity within the market, meaning it won't be as long that the actual buy signal here in your main indicator takes place here in your trailing. But at the same time, you may not get as good of a profit or as an entry point as you might have with larger values. It is trial and error per each and every coin. And the process does work well with the dollar cost averaging module and the stop loss module. But you do need to be careful with the stop loss module because you don't want to trail your losses down. So placement of this module is critical if you choose to use it. Personally, for a stop loss module, you may not want to use it simply because you don't want it to trail the losses down before you actually get out of the market. So there are risks with this module. Be sure you understand them because they can make a situation not as profitable. And some situations can actually incur a greater loss. Now you can use this module at any point within your algorithm. For example, at this point, I could take this signal line and move to the next indicator where I've actually used it as a filter for say an ATR or even the analyzer directly. So be sure to watch the numbers, run careful tests, make sure your placement within a more advanced algorithm is appropriate. You may even want to place this underneath of a dollar cost averaging module to try to get the best results possible. It will skew your numbers some, and it's going to. That is the nature of the beast. But it is a tool and a resource nonetheless in your tool chest. Until next time.